the stuff you put down your drain. In this episode of Pacifica Currents, we'll show you where it goes and more. I'm Edie Havermel, host for Pacifica Currents. In this episode, we'll be discussing Pacifica's wastewater treatment and water recycling. I have two guests this evening, Dave Grom, Director of Wastewater Plant and Collection Systems. Welcome, Dave. Thank you. And Brian Martinez, Collection System Manager. Welcome, Brian. Thank you, Edie. I'd like to hear a little bit about both of you. Let's start with you, Dave. Tell me a little bit about yourself. Well, I've been in the uh, wastewater field for 32 years. Um, in those 32 years, I've operated uh, four different plants. And uh, this plant here is probably the most interesting that I've ever done. Great. Brian, a little bit about yourself. Um, I'm the collection system manager, as you said. I've been with the City of Pacifica for 19 years, uh, 13 of those in wastewater maintenance. Brian, I guess you could tell us maybe a little bit about um, the collection system. Um, it's, it's everything that it takes to get the water from your home after it goes down the drain to the Clare Creek treatment plant. That system is comprised of a number of pipes and pumps and pump stations, manholes. Uh, where it all starts at is at, the, at your residence or at your business. Um, every home has a four inch branch, basically a pipe that comes off of the structure that takes all the drains, the toilet, sink, showers, um, and some different things in, in businesses obviously, um, but they all combine into one four inch pipe that drains the water to the city system. In most cases in Pacifica, it's a six inch pipe that runs down the street, um, sometimes behind the homes. Um, a lot of people think a, a sewer system is big like they see on TV. Um, where you can drive a car in it or you can make prison escapes. Um, <laughs> in, in Pacifica, our system is much smaller than that. It's mostly six and eight inch pipes. Um, our largest pipe in the entire city is 24 inches, so they're not that big at all. We have two men um, pretty much every day of the week out in a truck cleaning the lines. Um, a, another part of the job that a lot of people aren't aware of is we have a TV truck where we actually send a camera on a small tractor up the pipelines, and we're, um, we're capturing the, the conditions. We're, we make videos, we take photographs, and we use a, it's, it's called PACP or NASCO, and it's a, a uniform ranking of the pipe. So we take a picture of a pipe, and then we rank it according to those NASCO codes. And we're going to go ahead and show a video of one of our operators in the field now doing some of that data collection and assessment of our pipelines. My name is Paul Laverney, City of Pacifica's Wastewater Employee Operator 2. Uh, what we have here is an operation area with our computer set up and uh, our robot has just been uh, lowered into the manhole. We can drive through the sewer lines and we can show you actual Cracks, infiltration, roots, offsets, are in the worst situation, actual pipe missing, a void. This area here gives us access to all the pipes in Pacifica. We have about 95 miles of pipe in Pacifica. I'll take you down about another 20 feet, and what I'll do is I'll show you some items that we have found that need assistance. We look for cracks, infiltration, offsets, uh, debris, Okay, what we have here on screen now, found out that this was a gas line going through our, our uh, water main, our wastewater main. So, what we did was we went ahead and uh, talked to PG&E, and we told them about our problem, and I came down and showed them this picture. Obviously, the problem with the gas line is if you hook up to a gas line with our auger, we could rupture this line and there could be a bigger problem. 
we went ahead of, but without this camera, we wouldn't have known what's under underground. So this this whole section of pipe that we just looked at was changed with a poly pipe, and we went ahead and uh, inserted that. They moved their pipe out of our way. We backfilled and we fixed this problem before it became a bigger problem. When you approach our truck and you see us out on the street, we don't mind if you come up to us and you ask a few questions. We will have answers for you, but please approach with caution. This is a working truck and we do have an open manhole which you would not like to fall into. Our job is to keep that underground through our pipes, through our system until it gets to our treatment plant. So please help us by uh, only putting the proper materials down your wastewater line. And thank you. The way it works is the four inch pipes connect to the six inch city's pipes. Um, pretty much every street has one of those. As the flow increases and we get further downstream, we have larger interceptor sewers. We got a 12 inch, 18 inch, and then up to 24, like I said. Um, those pipes um, get the water collected and bring it down to a pump station, which we have five sewer pump stations in town, and they're basically at the base of every valley or drainage station. Um, so we have one in Lindemar that takes Lindemar and Pico Point. We have a pump station in Rockaway that takes all the drainage from Rockaway and Valley Mar. We have one in the southern part of Sharp Park that takes South Sharp Park and Fairway Park. And then the entire north, from, from northern Sharp Park to the north end of town, is all collected at the Sharp Park pump station. I wouldn't have known that. I know, I know the one in Lindemar, but I wouldn't have known the other ones. Yeah, the, the two big ones are Lindemar and Sharp Park, and then we have the two smaller ones. Oh, Sky Ridge is the one I left out. The newer neighborhood to the north of the town by Sharp Park Road, off the skyline, it's called Sky Ridge. Oh, okay. And there's one small pump station that sits in Sky Ridge that just collects and pumps the waste from Sky Ridge. Hi, I'm Doug Trade with the City and Wastewater Department of Pacifica. Right now I'm showing uh, Eric how the bar screen works for the city. It takes all the wastewater from the toilets, sinks, showers, comes through the bar screen, goes up the conveyor belt, into the hopper, gets mixed up on, mixed up in here, comes out in a pressed log, and then which we take to the garbage and dispose of. It's an everyday function. All the pump stations pump to one central location, and that's the Clare Creek Water Recycling Plant. The Clare Creek Treatment Plant is a tertiary treatment plant, which means it treats the water to a very high level. And I'm going to take you on a tour of it right now. Great. Okay, we're standing on the headworks of the treatment plant. The headworks is where the sewage comes in. The sewage comes in from the homes, through pump stations, through the collection systems, and enters this channel behind me, which then runs into the first process, which is what I'm standing on is a tank, and it's for grit removal. Grit removal is we're removing um, inorganic material, things like sand, rocks, asphalt, things that can't be eaten or burned. And uh, that, that stuff needs to be removed first because it can damage um, other equipment down the line. So um, after we remove the grit, then it goes on to a grit washer where we wash the grit to take any organic material that might be in it out, and then it'll fall into a hopper which we take to a landfill. Okay, where we're standing right now is in front of the SBRs. The SBR stands for Sequencing Batch Reactor. It's a biological process. We're trying to remove all the organic material. The organic material consists of uh, proteins, carbohydrates, and fats. We use an organism, it's a protozoa type organism. And these organisms literally eat all this material. And then the tanks turn off and they become very quiescent and the organism bodies sink to the bottom creating a separation in the water. So there'll be a clear water, a clear level on top with the organisms on the bottom and then we remove that clear water off the top and send it on to the next process. Our solar array consists of over 1800 panels. We have two different systems here. We have a fixed system which is over on the other side which doesn't move but this all through here is a tracker system. 
which actually tracks the sun as it goes through the sky. And what that does, it actually produces uh, more energy than the fixed system does. And uh, it produces probably about 15% of our power needs here at the plant. The wetlands is part of the treatment process. This is where we discharge our effluent. We brought volunteers in here and we, we took clippings of all the native plants in this valley. We created three different nurseries throughout the city and we grew over 150,000 plants and brought them back here and planted it. A local bird watcher has spotted over 150 um, different species of birds and joined the wetlands. We have also done a survey for frogs and snakes. They did not detect any San Francisco garter snakes, but we have a lot of garter snakes down here. We also have detected a, a pretty good population of red-legged frogs and tree frogs. Here we have an example of our influent and our effluent. The influent here is obviously on this side and our effluent is right here. So this is our finished product. You can clearly see the influent has quite a bit of solids in it. It's not clear. The effluent there are no visible solids at all, very clear. Yeah, so these are tested for various parameters, PO, pH, uh, hardness, alkalinity, conductivity, but also salinity. We do that once a day during the test. So these are cold water fish, so the temperature is right about 12 degrees Celsius. When we get the fish, we have a holding tank, which is a tank out of the aquarium, and you know, we let them this device is called a PLC, which stands for Program Logic Controller. It's an industrial computer. We have PLCs throughout the whole plant. All the processes that I've shown you before, they all have PLCs connected to them. They're smaller PLCs. This one that we're looking at is the large main PLC. So all the other PLCs report to this PLC and then gives us a display downstairs on a master computer where we control the plant from. Okay, we're standing in the uh, solid processing room. Here, we uh, process the different solids we remove. When the organisms eat the material in the wastewater, they reproduce. We have to control their population. We're actually taking those bug bodies off, taking a certain number of them away to keep a steady population. So here, we're taking some of the water out of it before we send it on to digesters. Okay, I'm standing in front of the centrifuges. The centrifuges are the final process before it falls into a truck and is removed. And it comes from the digesters. Our digester system is a very unusual digester system. We're the only ones in California that have this type of system. And what's different about this system is it creates Class A sludge, which is a reusable, unrestricted. And um, other treatment plants, they have to take their material out to the valley to have it composted. We don't have to do that here. And this material is a great fertilizer. The biosolids falls out of the centrifuge into this truck behind me here. And the biosolids are then trucked go up mainly up to Saclano County to farmlands where it uh, grows uh, oats for dairy cattle and uh, different feed for different animals. Okay, where we are now is the equipment gallery. This is where all the pumps and blowers are located to operate the sequencing batch reactors of the SPRs, also the digester system. We also have a very extensive um, odor system in here where we treat the air with chemicals before we send it to a biological air filter and then out to the atmosphere. The clear water is sent over to here to the sand filters. The sand filters are just a big bed of sand and as you can see the water falls over these weirs here and filters through the sand where any particles that might be left in the water are removed in this process, which leaves us with a, a, a water that looks very similar to drinking water. Here we have our ultraviolet light disinfection system. This is where we disinfect the water. We do it differently than some plants in the Bay Area. We don't use chlorine to disinfect. We use ultraviolet light. 
and the light has no residual. So there's no adverse effects when it goes down to the wetland. In the treatment plant, there's two different streams. There's the, um, the water stream, where we treat the water, and then there's the, the sludge stream, or the biosolid stream, where we treat the solids. And the um, water stream process, the main component is the SBRs. It stands for sequencing batch reactors. And those are a biological process. We grow organisms there that literally eat the waste in the water. So the waste in the water consists of proteins, fats, carbohydrates, and so we grow these bugs, and they're not, they're not weird science bugs. These are bugs that grow in nature, that live in all of our waterways. What we're doing is taking nature and we're concentrating it so it can treat a high volume of this waste. And so it's completely natural. And so it treats the water to such a high level, the water looks like drinking water. It literally is really clean. And um, then from that, you have all these microorganisms that are eating this stuff, and they multiply. So they multiply like crazy. And you have to control their population. So that's where the sludge comes in, the biosolids. A lot of people see the sludge as being human waste, and it's, it's not. Sludge is microorganism bodies. So what we do is the level, they grow every day, and we have to control them. We can't let them get too high, their population get too high. So we do what's called wasting. So we, we get rid of some of these bugs, and that's where the sludge process comes in. So the sludge is very unstable. It has all the disease, all, everybody in town that might have colds or the flu, whatever, it all is in that. And so we have to sterilize it. So we do that with another biological process, the digesters. And our digesters at the treatment plant are very unusual. We are the only ones in California that have this. We call them ATADs, but the long, long name is autothermal, thermophilic, aerobic digestion. And uh, that's why we call them ATADs. It's too long to say. <laughs> say that so, 10 times fast. <laughs> yeah. So um, these organisms literally eat the other organisms. And, and their, their byproduct, as they consume these organisms, they create heat. And the heat can get up, we've had our digesters up to 150, 160 degrees. And it's all done by biology. We don't heat these things up. It's just they're, they're metabolizing this food, they create heat. And so that heat kills all the disease-causing organisms that's in wastewater. It's, it's a very cool thing. It's very and, fascinating. Yeah. Yeah, so what we end up in the end, end product is we dewater the sludge, the biosolids, and it comes out and it looks like fertilizer. And it's literally sterilized. There is, and this stuff can be reused as fertilizer with no restrictions, which uh, no other treatment plant in California can say they can do that in their treatment plant. Very unique. Is it something that's going to catch on to other places or eventually become a regulation? Well, you know, or? it's funny because I'm going up and I'm going to speak about our digester system at the um, CWA conference up in Sacramento and um, in the 23rd of May here. And um, the reason I'm doing that is because there are no other ones in California. But the regulators are pushing all of our agencies to, to create this, this type of biosolids. And this type of biosolids is called Class A sludge. And most treatment plants create class B sludge. You can't use that as fertilizer. It still has all the disease that's in the town, is in that stuff. So, and our stuff, literally absence of all that. So. Do you have to have the pre, how, you know, you said you, we have the ultraviolet light and everything. Do you need to have that to be able to do the class A sludge? No, or no, no. You don't that's have on to the have water that. side. That's on the water the, side. We use on the water side, instead of using chemicals, like most treatment plants use chlorine. Right. And that's a very harsh chemical which will kill fish and aquatic life. So they have to use another harsh chemical to get rid of the chlorine, which when you use those two chemicals together, you create a bunch of, a bunch of chemical byproducts. Mm -hmm. So you're kind of messing up the environment doing that. Mm -hmm. So uh, in our, our case, we use ultraviolet light, which there's no chemical byproducts. Before the show, we were talking about do's and don'ts of what should go down your drain. Right. Uh, it was very interesting. I'd love you to, to share that with our watch, our viewers. Sure. Um, th there's 
basically the only thing we want down the drain is what goes down your toilet naturally with the water. Um, but the, the things that a lot of people know about paper towels or, or realize paper towels may plug up their sewer lines. Um, but paper towels, um, fats, oils, and grease, um, you know, your cooking oils or, or any byproduct from cooking is, is very harmful to the sewers. Um, also, the personal wipes we see a lot of now, they say flushable personal wipes. Um, they may be flushable, but they do not break down in our system quick enough. Um, they become entangled in the pumps. They become a real nightmare for us. Um, the oils and greases that people flush down their sewer lines, they get into our main lines and as they cool down, they coagulate and they get hard in the pipes and they stick to the pipe walls. Um, that becomes a real nightmare for us and, and it becomes a health hazard too because if it plugs up the sewer line, like I said, these are only six inch pipes running down the street. So it doesn't take a whole lot of grease to plug up a six inch pipe. When a pipe gets plugged, we start having sewer overflows. A manhole lid will open up, or even worse yet, sewer can overflow into somebody's home or business. Um, so paper towels, fat soils and grease, personal wipes, eggshells, those are all no-nos. Please don't put them down the drain. I also like to add here that um, chemicals are not good to put down your, your, your sink. Thank you, you know, using a little bit of chlorine to do your sink or something like that, that's fine. But to pour down gallon jugs, uh, bleach, or, or any harsh chemicals, um, that's a big no-no. Pharmaceuticals, another big no-no. Um, you know, that, that can have effects on the aquatic life. Because we, we do pump, after we treat our water, we pump it out into the Clear Creek and then it goes out into the ocean. So this could, could affect all, all them, um, the different hormones and different you know, medications that we take. Right. Also, the harsh chemicals can kill the bugs that Dave was talking about. Um, people pouring paint, gasoline, yeah. paint thinners, things like that. Mm -hmm. That that can be very detrimental on the bugs, which will throw that the whole process off. That can wipe out my off. biological, one of my biological processes, and then we're not treating the wastewater. And it could take it could take two weeks to bring that culture back. Mm -hmm. So it's really important that people don't do things like that. If not too many swimming pools in Pacific, but there are some. Um, chlorinated swimming pools. They need to let the chlorine dissipate over time before they bump it into our system. And they should contact our code enforcement first, and then we'll go up there and do chlorine residuals of that, that pool water and give them, the people the okay to, to pump it into our system. I would have never known that. That's yeah. good to know. Definitely pump it to us, but let us know. We don't want you pumping it straight out to the street. It does even more damage. Right. So um, down down our personal drains, but even the drains on the street are also things you, you don't put things down yeah, there absolutely. either, right? It I know should there's rain, signs sometimes. Rain down the drain. When it comes to the storm drains, it should be rain water and Just that's rain. it. Absolutely. Nothing else. Okay. That's excellent. Good to know. So if you live in Pacifica and you read the paper, there's definitely been in the last few weeks uh, uh, information about um, some violations that the water treatment plant has had. Can you talk to that? I'm sure people would like to know some about that. Sure, sure. You know, we've had some troubles in the early years of this treatment plant. The treatment plant was constructed with a huge flow range. And the reason that was done is because we get huge flow fluctuations. And that's because the collection system is needing, needs a lot of repair. And so during rain, rainy season, rains, the groundwater comes up, and a lot of the sewer lines are literally sitting in water. And so all, any pipes that have roots coming into them, that have breaks, um, the earth has moved and separated them, it just pulls in groundwater. So our normal flow for the treatment plant, our average flow for the year, if we average it out for the whole year, dry weather and wet weather, is right now currently 3.1 million gallons a day. During a rainstorm, we can get flow rates as high as 25 million gallons. Um, it's incredible. The treatment plant has been designed to take 20 million gallons. So uh, when they designed that, they were looking at the old treatment plant, and the highest flows we saw there was 16 MGD, 16 million gallons a day. Now we're seeing flows of 25 million gallons a day. So the, the, 
the collection system is degrading at a, an alarming rate. So we are on a, on a campaign now to fix that system. And the system, it's, it's massive. It's going to take us, it's going to take us um, probably 10 years to put a dent in that problem and 20 years to really put it behind us. And how many miles of, of sewer line we got, Brian? We have about 90 miles of sewer line right now. That's and, amazing. And like what Dave's talking about, the aging collection system, it's, it's definitely a problem Pacifica has, but it's, it's really a national problem at this point. Our sewers, for the most part, here in town are 50 years old. In other parts of the country, they're over 100 years old. And um, it's kind of an out of sight, out of mind thing. You know, the, the pipes are underground. People don't think about them too much. But as the years go by, like Dave is saying, we're, we're getting more and more groundwater into the system. Um, and that's what's really caused all of our problems. That's what our violations stem from. Um, the violations we had were from one large storm event back in January of 2008, January 25th. Dave and I both have that date uh, kind of hammered into our heads right now. I'm We've sure. been through a lot of um, a lot of negotiation sessions with the state and um, our Children's Earth and the city council and the city manager. Um, but what happened on that day is there was so large of a storm. It was the largest rainstorm that we'd seen in Pacifica. Um, in all the years that we've been keeping track of the flows, which is what, 20, 20 plus years, Dave, 25 years? Yes. Um, we had so much rainwater, it was one of those occasions like Dave's talking about, where instead of treating three million gallons, we had like 24 million gallons coming into the plant. Of course, you know, only three million gallons of that was sewage, the rest was all rainwater. Um, our pipes and the pump stations and the plant are just not designed to keep up with that kind of flow. We're having to TV our whole system, find out where all of our problems are, and then address them immediately. Um, we have goals where we, where we, every year we can have less spills and less spills till we get down to zero. That's really good to know that it's doing, being done systematically and and uh, prioritized. That's yep. that's wonderful. You know, the ideal situation if your if your collection system is tight and there's no leaks. It doesn't matter if it's rain or dry, you're still gonna get the same flow. It's three million gallons all year long. That's what we're trying to get to, or something close right, to that. Right, right. And that's the way it should be. Right, it's just extreme. I mean, it's such a, a difference between the dry to the wet. 800% that, that is, increase. It's, is that what it's, it is? Yeah, that is amazing. <laughs> well, thank you, David, Brian, for coming in. I really appreciate you talking with us. Is there uh, in, more information that people can get? Um, the website is cityofpacifica.org and then click on the departments link and go down to Calera Creek Water Recycling Plant. Great. Thank you for watching us this evening. You can find us on YouTube. Goodbye for now.